everybody start talking. Well, <laughs> uh, down. I kept holding it and holding it until talking. the bubbles stopped. The bubbles stopped. That might not be the best thing to tell online in uh, a recorded medium. Thank you, Josh. You're going to swat us. Yeah, right? We're going to get Hold swatted yourself. because of your stories. They don't know where I live. <laughs> yes. <but laughs> I'm in your house. In my house. house. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. I think we're good now. Everybody sound off real quick. Just introduce yourselves. Uh, Topher? <laughs> you're, you're not Topher. I'm Topher. Topher Tots. Hi. Hi. I'm Topher Tots. <laughs> I am Josh, also known as Sidewarf. I'm Blanthos, otherwise Sam. I do. I start up Runner Hub. Sweet. All right. I think everybody heard what I was saying last time, so we didn't lose any of the actual stuff and fluff, and we can continue. So, Josh, okay. So, anyway, so the inner ring, you have to push. That basically represents things that can run out. You can get less strong. You can get less willful. Uh, your personality can get damaged. Uh, and then the rest of them, the descriptors, the skill sets, and the associations are all what's called personal descriptors. Um, and these particular things are things that will not change about you. You may lose an arm, but you will always be a mechanic. Um, you may, you <laughs> know, you may lose your will, but you'll still always be a soldier at heart. Things like that. Um, those also have a certain amount of points that you can put into it. So that's pretty much everything. Um, we don't have to do any type of gear. We don't have to do anything like that. We just got to decide on what your statistics are and we can move right along. So Joshua, tell me a little bit about your character. What do you think you're going to be accomplishing in this? Oh gosh. Um, like how secret is this Marine group? Is it like special forces secret or is it just like, uh, the, the type of Marines that were sent in in like aliens, I would say like aliens. Okay. Um, because my original character idea was to do someone who did playthroughs and as a contest, uh, somebody dared him to go up to the station and do a playthrough of going up. So basically he was just doing it for the lulls, but that doesn't really apply here. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't really you can't really look at the, the, the sergeant that sends you out of the mission and go, hey, I'm doing it for the lulls, sergeant. I don't give a shit how you're doing it. You're going to go. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, can we go to Topher first? Because <laughs> sure. actually, his is actually applying more than mine. Yeah, I think mine can fit a little bit easier. I was going to be like a, a priest that was sent up you know, to kind of do some uh, uh, exorcism, exorcism sort of thing. Uh, you know, with all the souls, put the souls to rest, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, but if we're doing a marine group, we could do like a a chaplain, maybe um, a, a chaplain. Uh, okay. I don't know, grenadier. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfectly grenadier. capable. I mean, in <laughs> in fact, in most militaries, the the chaplain is normally some sort of a um, uh, an officer. So most likely, you would be the officer in charge of this particular detachment. Oh, uh, good. This, this considered like in this particular case is considered low low priority so you would most likely be put in charge with your chaplain duties as a secondary mm. so Topher how would you like to divide your 150 points oh god uh, I'll be so everything should idea. be pretty straightforward body mind persona um, obviously mm -hmm. body is your physical strength mind is your mental acuity um, your persona is your I would almost go so far as to say charisma your strength of personality um, yeah. id, ego and super ego are all based off of the, the Freudian notions id being your base instinct ego being your almost balancing force but also your pride and then your super ego being your rules being your uh, want for order Mm -hmm. And then the rest of them, uh, as far as your pneuma is concerned, your interaction, how well you play along with others, uh, your rote skill. Uh, so knowledge is your is your understanding of a topic. Rote mm -hmm. skill is your ability to pull it off. So while you may know how an engine works, which is your knowledge skill, you mm -hmm. may not be able to take one apart and put it back together, which would be rote skill. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. I see, like, the, the faint negative 20, negative 15. Are yeah, we starting so, from base negative 20, basically? No, what's, what's going on is from the left to the right going around the circle. Uh, anytime mm -hmm. that you spend one of these things on a check, anytime that I ask for an active check, you can spend one or two of these base attributes. 
Um, and what that does is that spins a push. You see, you'll see that there are seven boxes underneath each one. You start from the left, go to the right. On your fourth push, you start taking negatives to that particular thing. Showing that you're wearing down. So again, body's the easiest way to represent it. After so many times of lifting the strong boulder over your head, it's going to get a little tiresome. Um, yeah. You're going to start physically breaking down. So that's when you start taking the negative fives. Like you're starting to reach your limit. Negative 10, you're, you're starting to push past your limit. Negative 15, negative 20. Once you reach the negative 20, you cannot use that statistic anymore uh, until it recharges. Now, here's the best thing. Uh, overall, you, tr- you want to try not to go into those, obviously. You don't like negatives. Mm-hmm. But you don't get to recharge per scene unless you go into a negative. So at the end of every quote-unquote movie scene, uh, if you guys have dipped into the fourth box on any one of them, I will roll a d10, and I will give you that many points to give back into your statistics. So to recover pushes, it's a small rest period. Mm. Okay. Okay. Cool. But if you don't push into the negative fives, like the negative five, negative ten on one of them, you will not get that opportunity. All right. Then what we're going to go ahead and do... I'm going to go ahead and see if I've got nine. Sorry, one second. Okay. I have 150 total, right? You have 150. I uh, do it in ranks of five, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and then maximum yeah. of twenty-five. Now, while well, Topher, while you're thinking through that, let's deal with Val. You want to go next with your character concept? Yep. Um, I'm thinking of some sort of marine engineer. So we're in space. It would pay to have someone who can fix the ship or, you know, do some electronic stuff as we go through. Okay. So you want to be kind of a combat engineer. Yeah. All right. It works for me. Do you have any particular ticks or quirks that you want to... Maybe he's the goofball of the group. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, foul-mouthed um, smoker. You know, the guy has got coffee and grease stains all over him. Nice. Uh-huh. He's... He, he, He's good at what he does, and that's the only reason he is still around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I have a good one. Okay. okay. If, so that would be them. definitely something that we could work into personal descriptors as well, uh, especially foul mouth. That would be a very good one. Joshua, back yes. to you. What you got? Okay. Um, I want to be a demolitions expert, the demo man of the group. So demo man slash heavy, maybe? Yeah, yeah, essentially. But uh, uh, would prosthetics be allowed? Like, sure. especially? Okay, yeah, we'll do like a robotic arm. That'll be one of the yeah. descriptors. Yeah, exactly. Like a prosthetic uh, left arm going to almost the shoulder. Okay, that works for me. So go ahead and uh, distribute your 150 points, uh, all three of you. They're, you sound like a pretty good team that would work together. We have our Captain Chaplin who is leading the expedition. We have our combat engineer, who is foul-mouthed and rude and crude, who will be trying to fix the station. And we also have our heavy weapons guy, who has a cybernetic arm. (laughs) So also think about your particular associations and descriptors. So like it says in the book, um, it's going to be... Oh, yes, it's Machine Zeit. Sorry, guys. Um... It is available on Drive Through RPG, by the way, which is where most of us got it. I encourage everybody to pick this up as we get into it. Um, so, descriptors, skill sets, and associations. Those are all pretty much. Those are very straightforward. Uh, your descriptors is your your character. If you would look at your character, how would people describe him? Um, in the case of Val's character, probably foul mouth will be a very good one. Um, and if I remember correctly, there is a certain amount that we put into those. Isn't it 150 again for... I think so. Uh, Descriptor elements. Nine descriptor elements. Yeah. um, A strong starting set, it just determined three descriptor elements, three skill set, and three association, and divide those in 150 points. Yeah. It says universal elements, and then, says, oh, it splits it into personal elements and descriptors. So you have 150, period. And the 150 for your personal elements that. can be ranked. 
Yes. So, no, you're right. My apologies. So the one fifth goes into like body, mind, persona, id, ego, super ego, et cetera, et cetera. That's correct. And then there's another 150 that you get for your your descriptors, your personal. Does that is that descriptor skill set and associations? That's correct. Yep. Okay. So 300 total, but 150 has to go to each half. One, your universal elements, which is the wheel, 150 into your personal elements, which is the associations, etc. Um, like it says in the book, the more uh, detailed you get, as, as short of a sentence you can, the better. Uh, so smart may be, is good. Uh, that covers a lot. Um, brilliant a little bit is, is a little bit more telling. Uh, top of his class more specific you can try and do it and then finally vic valedictorian of mit is even more descriptive so the, the the better you can get with it and the more flair you can do basically the better the better you can bullshit the role which is basically <laughs> most of this game uh, um is oh we have to leap across the chasm oh crap i have most of my body field how can i how can i bullshit a role out of this <laughs> and it's coming up with the best combination possible to give you basically high of a role as possible um, I had one guy who was playing the nerd of the group, the like the skinny, wimpy nerd, and it was a huge chasm. And they're like, yeah, we have to jump it. You're the last person. And he's like, okay, I'm going to use ego because I don't want to fail in front of everybody. I'm going <laughs> to use interaction because everybody's cheering me on, and I'm going to use associations picked on in school because I remember running from the bullies as a child. <laughs> and it was it was glorious. He made it. He made it with so many conditions. It was hilarious. But um, it's it's basically again it's not so much it's movie logic it's not so much how physically able your character is to do it it's how well is your character motivated to accomplish the challenge which is awesome for me as a GM because I don't even need to roll anything most of the time I'm here to make sure you guys behave yourselves. <laughs> okay, so everybody got their their 150 into the, the circle. Uh, into the circle. Still working on the descriptors and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Val, you got most of it? Uh, yeah, I've got the attributes down down flat. Uh, uh, how many, I'm sorry, how many of each like description, skill set, and associations are we allowed to have? Uh, you can have as many as you want, technically. Uh, oh, a, a solid group is three per group, just like your, your mm -hmm. attributes. Um, but you can have four or even five if it's really you know how you want to extend it. Just remember that those are ranks that you're going to be losing because you have to have a minimum of five points and everything. So I always generally say like toss a twenty-five and then a ten and a five, just to you know show the twenty-five is your main standby of your character, and then the lesser ones are kind of like and in the chaplain's case it may be faith you know faith in humanity or you know, God's right hand or something like that. And that would be a 10 or a five to show that that's not his primary goal, but it is a big part of his character. So while we, uh, while you guys kind of wrap up on that, about how far are you? I should say, is anybody done? Uh, uh, again, done with the circle running through descriptor and stuff right now. Okay. I have a couple of descriptors. I'm almost done with the circle. Okay, and Val? I've done most of the... I've done the circle and I'm just down to the association elements with the descriptors. Fantastic. Okay, so while we do that, I'm going to explain to our, uh, our wonderful viewers here exactly what these roles mean. Um, basically, when I call for an active check, that means anything in the world that requires the characters to motivation to do something. Uh, it's going to be two D10s that they roll. Um, I do not dictate the difficulty of this. They dictate it themselves, like I explained earlier. They will take their character's personal motivation to succeed at the task in front of them. Um, so again, we'll go back with the, uh, the jump scene. Uh, your character needs to make it across a chasm. You can pick either an attribute and a descriptor, or you can pick two attributes and a descriptor to basically make your own difficulty challenge. Uh, this basically, again, shows how willing your character is to try to beat this. Um, anytime you use an attribute, you will use a push of it. The more pushes you use, the more tired your character becomes, and the, uh, the eventually you will start taking negatives to that score. So again, if your body is 20, you know maxed out at 25, if you use it four times, the roll will only come up to 20. If you use it five times, it's only going to come up to 15 as those negatives are introduced to that particular statistic. 
When all said and done, you're going to add everything together. So chasm jump, body, soldier. Uh, so the person says, okay, I want to use body and soldier to jump, both of which are at 25. So you add it together for a total of 50. You then roll your two D D10s, uh, or basically a D100. Um, in this case, you have to try and make match or get lower than the number. Uh, that means if you want to make 50, 49, 48, all the way down to double zero. The lower that you get, the better off you are. Because we introduce what's called conditions then. And the original condition is one success means that you beat the challenge. Every 10 that you get under the score, you get what's called a condition on the world. And conditions allow the players to affect the plot, story, environment, and basically just be general badasses. Um... Did Val drop? No, he's right there. Never mind. Val, you still here? Yep. Okay. Sorry, I saw your uh, saw your stuff drop off. Anyway, yep. so these conditions can do everything from determining if Josh wants to say that him and Topher are brothers. He can do that. That's a condition. Uh, that their characters are <laughs> watching the <laughs> watching the two faces on that one. Um, you bump. can you can dictate that you help somebody. <laughs> you know, oh, this person's hanging off the edge. Well, I make a really good success, uh, and I have some conditions. One of those conditions is going to be to pull him out of the pit. Uh, and and basically, what you say goes. In that particular case, though, with those conditions, if you use your condition to help somebody else, and you pull their ass out of the fire. They owe you one, which means that any other point during that scene, they can call that in. So you're stacking up your conditions. You got a good roll going, and suddenly you come up on the last one, Josh. You come up on the last condition. And Topher says, hey, remember that time I pulled your butt out of the fire? Yeah, that's my condition now. And he gets to dictate with it as he wills. Mm. It's, it's a good statistic to have. At any point in time, I, as the director, can offer to buy one of your conditions off. Basically, you roll really bad, and things bad things happen. Bad things TM. I can offer to, to change the roll for you, but you owe me one then, and I can do with one condition whatever I wish, which is not a good thing, because I can screw you guys over really hard. <laughs> um, also... We have these dramatic points. I call them plot points located in the center of your wheel. Anytime that you guys fuck over the party, you get a plot point. <laughs> Perfect example of this is we were crawling through a, a ducting being chased by a cable monster. Apparently the internal electronics of the space station had been turned into a monster. And they were trying to chase us through a like one of the crawl spaces like you see in Deep Space Nine. Yeah, I, I use one, one of my conditions to make the, the thing start falling out from behind us all. And the director gave me a plot point. I then used the condition to get out to pull somebody else out of the fire. So not only did I get a plot point, I got a condition. And that person owed me one. So you can, you can kind of stack these things for a little bit of effect. Um, pretty much. You guys will be creating most of your own tension for this besides the encounters that I have planned. Okay. Everybody kind of clear? We have miracles and tragedies that will happen on critical failures and critical successes. Uh, we'll cover more of those when we get to it. There are a list of rules on how to use the conditions. I won't really go over those at the moment. I'm, again, assuming that you guys read through that particular part. Um, we will cover it if it's needed, though. Um, but basically, it's, you know, don't be a dick, but be a, a dick. <laughs> you know, don't be a dick to the game. Be a dick to the party. Works out pretty well. Everybody clear? We all good? All right. uh, yep. Thanks Good so. stuff. That literally took like maybe 10 minutes to explain. I love this game. Okay, so we'll go... Who wants to go first? Explain character. Uh, Josh, you spoke first. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, my character's name is Pat. And Is that short for uh, Patrick? Yes. Okay. And... Okay, sorry. So do you want me to just run through my descriptor, yeah. skill set, and association? Yeah. Okay. Just roll through everything that you got for me real quick, just so everybody okay. knows kind of what you're working with. Okay. Uh, so he is clean cut, uh, common sense, Okay. and big pat are my dissectors. Big, big pat? Yes. Nice. Okay. I like that. Uh, associations, 
watch their backs, hold the line, and fear the unknown. Fear of the unknown. Okay. And skill sets, it goes boom. It and, goes boom. Uh, red wire, blue wire. Red, okay. And I was still deciding on the last one. But I actually... I, you're cutting out a little bit, Josh. I am? You were. Check, check. Yep, you're good. Okay. You're a little distant, uh, but you're good. Okay, so it goes boom. Red wire, blue wire. And you haven't decided on the last one yet? No. You don't have to. You can just apply the points. Yeah, I, I think I'm good with that. Okay. Yep, just take uh, whatever points you have remaining and put it in one of the other ones that haven't been up to date. Okay. Uh, who wants to go next? I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, jeez. Everybody's volunteering. <laughs> Everybody Tofer, wants... We'll go with you first. All right. Uh, so, descriptors, brilliant tactician, practical pacifist. Doesn't like to kill things, but will when it needs to happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Loyal, leader, fearless, optimist. Well, no, optimist is under associations. My bad. Okay. One second. And follows orders. Um, skill sets: basic medic, confessor, exorcist, motivational speaker, and marksman. Nice. Associations: faith, uh, loyalty to squad, and optimist. Very nice. I like that. All right, Val, let's see what your combat engineer has. All right, Dirty Dave, combat engineer with a mouth, foul mouth, out for a paycheck. Um, in the descriptors, he's got foul mouthed, scrapyard inventor, been around forever. Um, as 25, 15, and 10, respectively. Okay. He has oh. skills. He's got ace pilot 20. Uh, marine, like in the, in the core, 20. Spaceship Repairman 20, Loves the Horses 15, The Call Before Self 15, Engine Coolant and Dirt Cheap Women 10. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, sounds like we got a pretty good group. So we have Big Pat. Did you two name your characters? Oh, oh I forgot to name mine. Oh, no. Yeah, I did. Uh, well, I didn't say it. It's Fortin St. Greeman. St. Greeman. We'll just call you Saint for short. That'll be your call sign. So we have Saint, Big Pat, and Dirty... Dirty... Dirty Dan, right? Yep, it, it is now. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, sir, director, sir. Is. So we can't die. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's a red shirt. So setting is, you guys are all packed into a really, really tight ship. Uh, all you can see are the distant stars. They're not even moving because technically they wouldn't. Um, so you see kind of the same picture out of the ship. No real movement. You're all strapped into the webbing. Uh, and you're playing the dossier that was given to you before you were shoved into the airlock and promptly launched by your commander. The, uh, the stone face of your commander crops up, a very, very hardened veteran, uh, with the, you know, complete with the scar down his cheek, the, the chiseled gray hair, uh, and just absolute, you know, mountain of a man as he pops up and says, Recruits and uh, Captain... We're going to be sending you off to a station that has lost communication on planet. Uh, the particular planet that you're going to is... And he stops for a moment. Hostile, to say the least. I'm not really even sure why we have a colony on this godforsaken planet. <laughs> but it is not our question. It is not us to question the decisions of our leaders. Simply to clean up after their fuck-ups. So, uh, this, particular, this particular planet is known for its uh, hazardous atmosphere. So, I would suggest keeping your suits on at all times unless there's signs of oxygen in the air. Uh, we have sent along, uh, there are atmospheric analyzers, uh, so you can test to make sure that there is oxygen. We lost contact with this colony several months ago, and we have not heard anything since, uh, even to the point where the uh, distress beacon has not been launched. Your mission is to go in there, figure out what happened, see if you can bring the colony back active, and then extract as soon as possible. And he proceeds to give the uh, the Marine salute with the, the hand over the heart, and the scene cuts out. I salute and then slowly let the finger out to show him just what I feel <laughs> of this mission. <laughs> Sir, yes, sir. Private. 
privates? And okay. Pat no, is just, slowly just... snoring against the bulkhead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you guys want to take some time and, and talk it out? Do a little role plan? What do you want to do? I'm still snoring. So. All right. So we've got to go to this planet, bring it back into colonization activity. Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> the pilot says, if you ask one more goddamn time, Captain, with all due respect, I'm going to shove you out of the airlock myself. <laughs> As you were then. <laughs> Shut up, Pat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think we should get to the fucking like computer s- surveys because surely there'll be a log somewhere on the thing. Then we can do a quick get the maps and... You know, plan from there. There's no point, you know, dilly dallying whilst we don't even know the layout of the colony. Are we able to do a flyby first? Uh, the pilot gives a quick look back over and he's like, that's the plan. All right. Hopefully we can see if there's any external damage. Okay. All right. Anything else you guys uh, would like to, to ask or suggest? <sighs> Uh, you guys can certainly we know? make checks for preparation if you want to. Yeah, hey, I'd like to go yeah. ahead and uh, <laughs> make sure I have all, all of my gear. Also, uh, are we doing like a hot drop into the <laughs> star base, cutting into it? What are we doing? No, they, a- there is a helipad, uh, like ah. a space dock almost. Um, it is pretty bare bones. Um, it is you land on it, you walk into the airlock that is on the other side of probably about 20 feet of exposed atmosphere. Right into the alien nest. Got it. <laughs> so, can I check the gas masks and the guns? Just to make yep. sure we don't... You kind of once over it, to- check everything. To- um, you, everything just looks make- good. Yeah. Um, I'm checking. D- do I have detonation gear? Or sapping gear? Mm, I would assume competency on that one, so I would say yes. You all have your normal assault rifles. Um, you have your uh, any type, like small amount of explosives. I mean, maybe a satchel charge and a grenade or two. Small. <laughs> um, the captain, however, does not have an assault rifle. He has a pistol, being an officer. Um, <laughs> You've done screwed. <laughs> but you do have a little bit better armor than the rest pistol. of them do. Yeah, oh. what is your pistol, by the way? Would you like to define that for me? Sure. It's huge. Keep your pants off! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. No, um, basically, it's a... Uh, okay, there he is. Let's go with a... Uh, Damn thing's a hand cannon. <laughs> yeah, I would say like a hand cannon. Like, it's yeah. better than dirty something. Harry. I was going to say, Some like, arms. not dirty hair. I don't want a revolver. We want, we want something at least like an 18 clip, 15 clip. <laughs> so, I don't know. No, we'll go ahead and go with the uh, Desert Eagle. Okay. Like a, a modern or futuristic Desert Eagle. Futuristic Desert Eagle, yeah. All right. A Desert Eagle futuristic with desert. lasers. Oh, man. You get a laser <laughs> pistol, guys. It's it's awesome. Pistol. Lasers. A laser pistol. All right. So, you guys um, basically spend the rest of the time kind of prepping your gear, looking over everything, making Start some. Start with um, the laser. <laughs> Making small talk. The pilot is is very irritable with all of you because you won't stop pestering him for fun. Hey. Um, and finally, hey. you manage hey. to get to a you know a hey. look of the planet. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> you see him hovering his finger over the airlock button. He's like, <laughs> Can't do it. So Can't do God. it. <laughs> Um, and you see all the shit I have laid my eyes on. Uh, this beautiful blue um, planet. Did anybody just lose Tony again? I think uh, uh, yeah, I lost uh-huh. Tony. You lost me? What did you say about my mother? Hello. Check, check. Mike, one, two. Can you guys hear me? Oh, oh lag. Big lag, small lag. Hello. Okay, hey, you guys hear me all right? Yeah, I can oh, hear you. Oh, wow, that was late. I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Check. Yeah, there's a really big lag on your part. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah. Interesting. Well, let's try this one again. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, yep. yeah. Oh, crap, what did I just do? Topher? Yep. Okay. Me? Yep, I can hear you fine. 
There's Josh. There's still for this Val. Excellent. Okay, back in business. I have no idea what's going on. I see, I see not Bob. Who's not Bob? Oh, not Bob is one of the other people that was supposed to come in. There we go. Oh, okay. So he's yeah, not Bob. and he's uh, unfortunately he had to he had to dip out his loss. He's so as you guys come into range of the planet, uh, you see a beautiful blue orb. Um, from everything that you've read, it looks like some sort of a uh, the gaseous planet. There is a thick layer of uh, a particular type of gas that surrounds the planet, uh, preventing any type of light from coming through. But there is it's very very hot. Um, they decided to make a colony on this planet because it is a scientific anomaly. There's no, or very few planets like it that could support any type of life, um, at least in a contained environment like what they did. Every other place is too acidic, you know, too, you know, there's too much oxygen and everything rusts, including aluminum. This is one of the very few places where they could build it and suffer a minimal amount of interference. Um, so that's pretty much the one place that's there as you guys start descending into the atmosphere uh you, you just it's blue that's it you guys don't see anything else for probably about a good 10 minutes while everything starts shaking uh from the atmospheric entry well this is exciting <laughs> <I've got> sunshine <laughs> everybody went before we dropped right <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys coast in finally it clears out and you just basically as you come in, it's it's browns and blues, uh, brown for the earth, blue for the rest of everything else. Um, it Sounds is like you see blue splotches hitting your hitting the screens outside as the uh, finally the rain catches up with you. And from what, again, from what you remember, this place is in a continuous greenhouse cycle, so it's always raining as the clouds condense. And then it's so hot they just immediately evaporate as soon as they touch the ground and come back up. So it's always raining. Um, finally, uh, you kind of coast around, and there is a modular type of colony. It doesn't look like some of the larger ones you've seen. There's probably about six, seven, probably actually probably closer to ten major large sections, all connected by small, um, by small, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, hallways, like con contained hallways. Uh, between all of them, with it centered around a large center dome, which looks like a classic biosphere that you've seen. Swoops around. You guys take a quick look. Nothing really looks out of place, uh, except is. Does anybody want to make me like a uh, a spot? And uh, you can and you can refuse to do so. You don't have to roll a check. Can I roll uh, a spot? Look at the I, landing I mean, area. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time. Who suggested the flyover, so I'd probably make the spot. Okay. Anybody else want to roll as well? I'll lean against uh, window and take a look at it. My um, spaceship repairman. Okay. So we'll go in order real quick. Josh, you said you wanted to go first. Give me your give me your roll. Okay. It's two D10s, right? It is two D10s, but you have to pick what your challenge rating is. So Give me what okay. your statistics are to make this spot check. Okay. So, so you can pick one attribute and a physical and a descriptor, or you can pick two attributes and a descriptor. Uh, I'm going to go knowledge, which is 15. Okay. And it goes boom. Okay. Because I'm, I'm looking for any sign of damage and explosion, so. Very nice. I'm making it. So I roll then 35. Is that right? Yes, 35 means that you have to make a 35 or under in order oh. to make this roll successfully. Okay, so 2d10. So, okay, so I'm rolling a d100. Pretty much. And you can just straight up roll a d100 in here. You don't have to roll 2d10s. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> uh, uh, 9. Uh, can I add a mod? I guess it's mine, common sense as well. Yeah, just mind. So any you get to pick one or two attributes in the center circle and one descriptor on the outside. Okay, so so that's 20, 20, 25, I guess. So 20, 20, and then 25 on top of that? Yeah. So you're rolling a 65 chance, 65%. Yes. Okay, so like I said, you got to make that or below. Yay! All right. So, again, this is, this is where the conditions come into play. So you have 65, and for every 10 that you go lower, you get another condition to dictate what's going on around you. Okay. Oh. So in this particular case, you would get, I believe, 2, 
because it okay. goes from 65 to 55. That's one. 55 to 45. That's two. And he didn't quite hit 35. So okay. I get two. I think. Did I do that math right? I'm an English major. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, two, because you're just yeah. too short of three. Yep. Okay, so you get two conditions. You make the original success, so I described to you as you fly by. Um, you do notice that there is one particular dome that looked like it had observation windows. It no longer has observation windows. There is shards of glass everywhere. I don't know. Okay, and then you have two conditions to basically affect your environment or your story. Okay. Uh, so we can I'm, actually take this point and I will describe to you what you can and can't do with these conditions. Okay. Um, dramatic elements. Okay, so guidelines for conditions. This is pretty much where you guys are going to tell the story. Uh, every time you get a condition, you can do one of the following things. Uh, each weapon or type of injury causes a certain amount of conditional damage per condition. So if you stab somebody... It's going to cause about 5% damage. If you use more conditions, you can boost that damage. Uh, each condition used can remove a single push from a character's universal element, so you can make other people more tired. Um, so, like, at some point, you know, Josh really feels like Val should be spending more id. He can start, basically say, condition, remove an id point. And that will boost, that will send him farther down. Uh, a single condition can only directly affect one character for better or worse, period. That means, Josh, if you really feel like screwing over both of your teammates, you need to come up with a global thing. You can't basically say Topher and Val, both of you get stabbed. Doesn't quite work that way. <laughs> do we have the nuke it from orbit? We do not have a nuke it from orbit. Well, I, maybe you do. I don't know. You got you to gotta search. Um, if you want to do more, you have to invest additional conditions. Uh, condition can only directly influence the current scene or the next scene you can't do more than that so you can't say i know that there's an escape pod at the end of this you don't know that <laughs> um condition can prevent a condition can prevent a condition in the same scene on a one-for-one -one basis that potential condition must be defined immediately so basically you can't say my character cannot trip into this vat later you can say he's got sure footing around the vat this scene so that way we'll move into the next scene and you guys are running past it. I can say, ha-ha, there's ooze there, slip ploosh. <laughs> Sploosh. Uh, a condition can be used to benefit another character. That's the O O one. So if somebody sees Joshua toppling over, Topher, you can say, oh, I'm going to use a condition on my next roll to pull him out. And he will owe you one from then. Uh, in lieu of causing injury, a player can demand the subject of a condition be Im immediately checked for stabilization. So you can take all of the damage in the world, but at the end of the scene, you're going to have to check to stay conscious. It basically represents like John, you know, uh, John McCain, not John McCain. Uh, pff, what's his name? <laughs> Die Hard. Can't remember his oh, name. McBain. <laughs> yeah, John McBain. He goes through John the whole Kane. half of the That's half of the so things hard. get shot, gets stabbed, gets impaled, and he still stays awake because he succeeded on his stabilization roll <laughs> for that particular scene. It suddenly makes so much sense. And this particular condition says that if any one of you, so Topher, you're barely hanging on. You manage to make, you know, you get stabbed three or four times, and all of a sudden Val decides, hey, my condition, Topher's gonna have to take a freaking check. And you're going to have to because you're, you're feeling it now. And all of a sudden you have to make a stabilization check. Okay. A condition cannot negate a previously committed condition. So if Joshua, you say that Topher is your brother or your brother-in-law, right? Val cannot then say later, actually, that's not true. They're, you know, they're step cousins. You were adopted. Yeah. And then the, as the wheel turns, logo. <laughs> Uh, at any time, the director can choose to alter the rules or results of a role in order to benefit a character. So I can say, you know what, that kind of didn't go in your favor. Let's say that you didn't slip into the vat, Josh. In which case, you can say, yeah, sure, I actually really don't want to die this turn. <laughs> and you would then owe me one. Uh, in which case, anytime you get a condition, I can say, nope, that's the GM's condition. You don't get to do anything with it. Um, now, there is a limit on O's. You can only, one person can only owe you one. That's it. They can't, so Joshua, you can save Topher multiple times, but at the end of the scene, he's only going to owe you one. Okay? 
Uh, however, that doesn't mean you can't have multiple characters OU1. It just means from that one person, you can only get one condition. Uh, encourage the use of conditions to develop character relationships and backgrounds. And then bring the awesome. If you do something that's directly detrimental to your group, the director may reward you with a plot point. Okay? So, Josh, you have two of these big bad boys to use. How would you like to affect your world? Shit. Um... Wow, so much power. Ugh. Pretty much. Uh, um, yep. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have to think of this quick then. It's okay. Okay, I'm sorry. That's all right. That is, if anybody wants to follow along, if you guys have the uh, the PDF book, that's on page uh, 104 and 105. Anybody that's following along in the book... <laughs> Turn to page 53 for when Sonny and the Bridesmaid... <laughs> Sonny and the Bridesmaid. Okay. Um, then... Okay, one of them is going to be shit's gone down. Is yeah, it has. I don't think that's a condition, considering it's already been stated. Damn but it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, conditions already. You can you can basically use this to do an effect pretty much anything. You can say, oh, okay. um, "I have a combat knife on my vest." Um, oh, you can oh, say, oh, "I oh, spot oh, something oh. on the the landing platform." Okay. You know, things like that. You can you can affect what you see, what's going on around you. Um, the you can even ask questions. I mean, one of them okay. looks like a cafeteria that I saw because I worked on mod these types of modules before. Things like oh. that. Oh, so you can directly influence the world itself. The yeah, world you can do anything you want with these plot oh. points. This is basically your story story to tell. I'm here to provide the resistance. Okay, got it. Uh how far away are we from the uh, facility? Like, are we? You're you're doing a direct flyby. You're pretty close. You can't see anything that's going on inside. It's kind of like that forty-five degree downward look. Okay. But he's he the guy is not willing to get much closer. Okay, I'm gonna say that those windows were not broken by natural causes because there's no depressurization that could have broken those things. Okay. And I am also going to say that I raided the military locker for demolitions before I left. Okay. Uh, I will say that you will get an extra, you will get a, uh, a small brick of C4. <laughs> okay. So that's that's what you guys see. You see that those windows have been busted out. Uh, Pat looks down and he shakes his head and goes, "This this wasn't done naturally. This wasn't depressurization." Dun dun dun. And you stole C four. Do you realize the paperwork I'm gonna have to do for that? <laughs> well, yes, I'm just holding the C four that just magically appeared in my hand for you to see. <laughs> you just said you stole it from the requisitions locker. Was he talking out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I use confessor. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. No, sorry, go ahead. Way, Carry on. Josh, you're uh you're coming in on Topher's mic, but not your own. Yep. <laughs> Val, Topher, is there anything that you guys would like to do on this particular fly? Oh, I, I go, well done, Captain Obvious. <laughs> 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 These things that like, you know, built to withstand being dropped down from space. I'm sure that, you know, it would have to be something pretty unusual to break the glass. Okay. Yeah. All right. I use optimist to chuckle. <laughs> optimist, ha ha. <laughs> it can't possibly be anything terrible. Okay, so you guys, uh, as you fly around, you you take the check on the rest of the building. There's nothing else that much stands out. There's a a few what looks like emergency airlocks just in case of fire or something like that so they're not being funneled but it looks like the primary airlock is sitting outside next to the um next to the uh landing pad so as it comes down it whooshes with the soft and the pilot looks back and says get off my goddamn ship i look at him are, are we there yet <laughs> and this time he presses the airlock button <laughs> as a door slides up between you guys and him <laughs> uh, he liked me. Yeah. I just, you know, flip him off as I walk off with my toolkit okay. in hand. You guys do have the, the gas masks on, um, as well as any prerequisite, like, basic body vests type stuff. 
Kevlar vests, your cargo pants filled with ammo and explosives and all that good stuff. Yeah. Do I have enough bubble gun to last the mission? <laughs> <laughs> Why? So you so you don't have to pick between chewing bubble gum and kicking ass? Yeah. All right. All right. So you guys walk out. There is a lush green moss that covers most everything. Um, as a very, very, it used to be well beaten path between the landing pad and the airlock. Uh, not so much anymore. The moss is pretty, pretty legitimately taken over most of the path back. It is a lush green, which is uh, very interesting considering most of everything around here is blue. Um, you see some mountains in the distance that are again peaked by these gigantic blue swirling clouds. Um, you do see splotches of green, but it is mostly brown. It looks like this moss only is um, viable at lower altitudes. What would you like to do? You have this brand new world, gentlemen. Um, I, I'm basically, unless there's some easy access doors, the window, the broken window seems like the easiest entrance and like a good place to start checking things out. That is on the complete opposite side. Uh, and you guys slowly notice that the exposed parts of your suit starting to itch a little bit. Let's get inside. Yes, let's get inside. <laughs> Josh, are you okay? I'm still trying to figure out my body. His mic's not working too well. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, so you guys managed to go in. Uh, you walk up to the gigantic, uh, and it really is gigantic. It's at least 10 feet tall. Um, it just has these huge automatic doors, and you have this feeling that with the combined with the gentle ramp down from the landing pad, that this was also majorly used for cargo resources. Um, just, But you don't know what is 10 feet tall that would be required to move in. Um, but it doesn't look like there's a handle, although... You don't really expect there to be one because who has the muscles to open a you know ten foot tall door by themselves? All right. Um, can I do a knowledge and rote check to basically look for some sort of maglock thing and or keypad and basically hardwire it to open for us? Sure. What's your what's your descriptor that you're going to use for that? Uh, spaceship repairman. I feel that these kind of things would be common anywhere. And in... you are correct. What's the what's the grand total of your two attributes and your descriptor added together? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Okay. Roll your D one hundred. Remember, a hundred is an automatic failure. I should say ninety-five to one hundred is an automatic failure. Zero zero to five is a miracle. So. 78, that means you rolled above the, the check. So you hey, walk you over. Good. What's up? Are we good? I'm going to get Josh a mic really quick. One second. Sure. If you guys want to take a quick five minute, we've been going for about an hour and a half, actually. Yep. Yeah, quick bio break. I think we can call five. Because I got to go potty. All right.
Bada bing. Bada bing. <sighs> so what do you think so far, Val? Good. I'm, things have yet to hit, like shit's yet to hit the fan, so I'm looking forward to that in not so many words. <laughs> Humbly excited? Terrified? That may be a better word. Especially because I did not do well on that check to get the doors open. <laughs> it happens. Unfortunately. But, uh, especially on a 75, I'm surprised. 65, but yeah. Oh, 65. Still. Oh, well. Them's the breaks. At least it wasn't 100. Anywhere from a 95 to 100 is a critical fail. And I get to do awesome stuff doors open <laughs> at him looking right at us <laughs> hi last call Redgrave I love you Josh can you hear us you can hear us but you can't, we can't hear you you could always go cuddle with Topher and use his mic. No. <laughs> Came back just in time to nip that one in the bud. <laughs> Maybe you have to activate the microphone in the uh, the windows. That's what I'm doing right now. Oh. Is it, does it give you any audio on the levels? Let me see your computer really quick. Technical support. <laughs> Please hold while we do technical support. Do 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 Let's go through all of these real quick. Oh my goodness. Okay. God, you leave for an hour and freaking Runner Hub blows up. Always the way. Here, let me see. Let me see the headphones. Uh, which one? Uh, either one. <laughs> I'm suddenly hearing myself in the computer, too. <laughs> Where is that coming from? Go away, me. There we go. All right. I'm loving the fact that on Joshua's screen, I see the top of Topher's head, and on Topher's screen, I see an upside-down laptop. <laughs> hey, great. What's that? Was it picking me up before, or was that only through your headset? It's yeah. only it's through Topher's headset. That's how it was before, but the... Uh, let's see. Because I can, I can hear Josh when he speaks up through your microphone, so if he moves closer, he can use yours. That's true. We could always eh, cuddle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here, go ahead and. I don't think it was. Let, let them know that I'm going to try restarting the computer because Skype. Yeah, he's going to. He's going to try and restart the computer. He said it did something funky when Skype called. Um, okay. Don't forget to plug it in, too. Well, of course, I guess you have crazy battery in that, too. So, he's rebooting. All right. Well, we'll keep it on hold for a few more minutes. Meanwhile, I asked uh, I asked Val Topher, what do you think so far? Mm -hmm. well, I like it. I really like the idea. It just the uh, it's really freeform. I love it. It's the biggest reason why I love it. When I played it, it was we had a lot of dicks in the party <laughs> when we played. When I played the first time, and he's the. Uh, the the creator said it was the the best game he's ever DM'd because we took such free will and fucking each other over. <laughs> <laughs> Munchkin meets RP. It really was because like we had a good separation of what was good for us in character and what was better for us out of character for like points value. So we yeah. were always after the plot point. So like at any any given point in time, somebody was probably going to throw you under the bus and then try and save you from themselves. <laughs> <laughs> for the lulls and the points oh yeah it's awesome. uh it is it is munchkin it's sci-fi horror munchkin and it's great 
<laughs> but I awful. do hope I actually get you guys a little creeped out here because it is horror. So we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens. Last time I played this game, I um, ended up making one of the players almost piss himself. Awesome. <laughs> But then again, I, I clapped in the mic, like as close as I could to the microphone when nobody was expecting it. So, <laughs> friendly, he had his volume almost all the way up, and all I heard was like, <laughs> boom, and just tossed his freaking headset. Like, Sarge, what the hell was that? <laughs> Your space station, something exploded. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It was, because uh, I, I, got, I got real quiet. I was like, all right, so you guys are going down the hallway, and as you're going, your steps are getting a little quieter. And quieter until they can't hear anything at all. Boom! And just out of nowhere, left it for a couple of... Th- and then they all just lost their shit. It was hilarious. It's great. <laughs> I love playing this. It's even better when you play it in person, too, because you can turn off all the lights and you can get the, the creepy <laughs> ambient soundtrack going. And it was cool. It'd be a lot of fun. Actually, I found a... um. Uh, what was it? Uh, there was a, a, it was a 4chan green text and, uh, basically it was this guy's free form horror role play that he did. It wasn't this system, uh, but basically everything he did was off the cuff. Mm-hmm. It was completely impromptu. He had only a few major things planned at the beginning and then he just let the players continuously make up their own shit and eventually like. It, it ended up being a, something like an eight-hour-long session, and everybody was thoroughly terrified by the end of it. <laughs> Be, just because he, he used that. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah. And I'll put it in chat. It's Oh, man, it's so good. Check, check, check. Yeah, it's good, yeah. so, uh, All right, let me see if I can check. add it back in real check. quick. Okay. Barely heard you there. I'm sorry? Barely heard you there for a second. Hello? Nope. Hello? Still nothing, dude. What the frick? That sucks. Come uh. cut me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to remind me when we're done with this game and I'll, I'll try and find that um yeah. try and find that that green text for you guys. Yeah. Which one? Uh believe. the the Basically, it's a 4chan green text of a guy who ran a freeform sci-fi RPG, pen and paper, and he basically terrified everybody so thoroughly on a completely impromptu, like, Im- completely improv run. Hey, one second. I'm going to swap my mic with his. I hope this doesn't, like, scream at us. Prepare for depth charges. Three, two, one. Nope. New audio device. Oh, hey, there it is. New audio device found. Okay. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, thank freaking. <laughs> <laughs> they could have joined if they really wanted to, you know. Well, no, Rachel wanted to play Don't Starve. Uh, no, I can't hear you, Topher. I just hear you through Josh's mic. Oh. So it's the microphone. <laughs> Don't starve is a legitimate use of time. <laughs> but these are really nice headphones. I'm thinking about investing in these. Yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely. I got um I got Tritons right uh, now. Okay. My old ones broke, and I got a new set, and they're freaking amazing. This is the Turtle Turtle Beach. Turtle the Beaches. Turtle Beach PX22 that Topher has, and I'm probably gonna pick up as well. 
Topher, can you can you try one more time? You're messing with your settings. Yeah. Yeah, I don't hear anything. Yep, just through Joshua's mic. Yeah. All right. Dun dun dun. Yeah, so you guys are probably gonna have to cuddle and use the mic. I've got a uh, one, uh nine. Snowball. Do you wanna okay, well do you wanna run up okay. Now it says I have no, no microphone at all. Awesome. Alright. You can go get that. Okay. Do, do you want to switch back <laughs> and meet at the snowball and then you have. No, we can use the snowball up here and just use that. Okay. It's gonna I'm sorry, Tony. That's alright. I just hate you all. That's all there is to it. It's feeling mutual. Uh. Well, at least we're getting all the for the other games that we're going to play in the future. Yes. We're getting it all out of the way now. No, I'm I'm basically going home and buying these either tonight or tomorrow off Amazon, so they'll be here. Yeah, look into the Tritons, the the AX, and I forget actually what model this is, but this one's pretty good. I like it. It's very it's very natural. Okay, that's interesting. That's ooh base. <laughs> do, 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 drop the base. Oh. oh shit! Dropped it too hard. And I can, oh, oh, you have fancy schmancy. Yeah, that's a snowball. Snowballs are amazing. Look at that. It's so fancy. Yep. That shit's so fancy. I need a second monocle. <laughs> that's why it's a glasses. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, there's activity. Hi. People. Uh-huh. I'm being crowded. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. Um, good, that works. No. What? 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 Oh, what? sorry. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Josh, we're going to have to actually deactivate the microphone. Yeah, that's what. Excellent. Did. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? I can hear can you. you. Uh, Topher, I think your screen just froze. My screen? Yeah, I, I, I'm not seeing any movement. All right. Okay, there we go. There we go. Excellent. Oh, wow. That's okay. Beautiful. So can you guys hear me all right? Yep, I can hear you fine. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Yay! All right, cool. So, back to the game. Uh, <laughs> Dirty Dan has somehow knocked open the key card reader and is rooting around in there for a good 10 to 15 minutes, uh, just trying to connect wires. Meanwhile, Topher, Josh, you guys are kind of looking around, you know, keeping your... Uh, you know, keeping your visual open for anything. Uh, and again, it's just, it's starting to, like, what started as a an itch is starting to turn into, like, a slow burn. Like, oh God. it feels like somebody rubbed hot sauce all over your seal and any exposed skin on the back of your head. Ow. Ow. Your scalp feels like it's starting to crawl a little bit. And it feels like it, you would be sweating in a really hot room if you were sweating at all. Uh... So, and finally, man. finally, Dirty Dan, what do you do? You can't, can't figure it out, dude. Uh, um, you, I'm basically just gonna shout to the other guys. Hey, do you guys have enough explosives to blast your way through this? I am not using my explosives in the first five minutes. Let uh, mention. I have some. Because I'm not getting through this. Ah, <laughs> uh, wait. Okay, Can I so use my just as a wire, reminder. Blue wire? Ed, just a reminder, everybody that has used attributes up till this point in the checks, Josh and Val, make sure to mark a push off on those attributes underneath what you used. Yeah, just as a reminder, push off is like minus one? Uh, no, the push is, like I said, those, those squares, those seven squares that are below it. You start with the one farthest to the left or the, yeah, farthest to the left on each of those and you just kind of mark it off. 
Once you reach the negative five, that's when you start taking the, de the deficiency against the score. Oh. And the points for the scriptures and skill sets, things like that, do you mark those off too? Or? Nope. Those are, the, like I said, those are your strength of personality. That doesn't change oh, no matter okay. what. It's, uh, it's things like, again, your, your ego weakening. You don't really care about your pride anymore. Or your body <laughs> starting to fail. Things like that. Okay. Um, so, Val... Okay, so uh, can I attempt uh, red wire, blue or... Blue red wire, wire blue it? wire? Uh, okay, how would, you, how would you go about this? Because Dirty Dan, your combat engineer, hasn't done this. How would you like to... I believe the servos are broken. <laughs> the damn station was built by a bunch of drunk kids. <laughs> well, then, I, I, I have more experience than you in drunkenness. So let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pick your statistics. You can okay. use, like I said, you can use one or two attributes and a descriptor. Okay. Uh, I... Okay. I'm always lucky. Yes. I will okay, so always love I'm gonna use you. Mind again. Uh, rote skill. Now, just as a just as an aside, um, this would be a good time to do something along the lines of ego, uh, because you can you oh. your your personal motivation would be to upstand Dirty Dan at his own game. Oh. <laughs> Things like that. Like I said, this most of this game is about bullshitting terrible roles. Okay. I uh, as per your, your advice, I'll go ego. And another mine, and then red wire, blue wire. Red wire, blue so, wire, bringing you to a total of uh, 10, 20, 25, so fifty-five. Oh, okay. Oh crap! I need to get back in the uh, roll twenty. Oh, the roll twenty. I'm sorry. It's okay. I got you. Thank you, Tony. Not a problem. It's really strange to hear Josh talking but watch Topher's monitor light up. <laughs> I was gonna say I can't. I can only hear him through my own ears. <laughs> it's not coming through. So okay. So I need to get below fifty. Ah, oh, damn it! <laughs> so another That's... ten to fifteen minutes pop up, and Josh and uh, Pat has down. literally pulled most of the wiring out of the console, and there's is currently no just here somewhere. You said that there's like a large lever that opens, supposed to open the door, right? No, I didn't. But if you, I mean, there's, there's obviously got to be an alternate way to get in because as these two are bickering and fighting over, no, the red wire goes there. This is not a red wire. It's blue tinted out here. As they continue going back and forth on it, <laughs> it's clearly red, not in a blue shifted planet. It's not. Um, as they continue they bickering, red wires here? <laughs> if you want to, you could make me some sort of a, a check to see if you can find an alternate, either alternate means of entry or alternate way of opening the door. Yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and do an alternate uh, means of entry, like look in the, on the wall nearby, you know, see if there's an, a, a service hatch, something like that. I, I swear, if there's a sign, my, my leadership, my mind, and my optimism. Why your leadership? Because remember, it's it's, uh, it's one or two attributes, and then okay. a descriptor. Oh right, right, right. So uh, never mind. Screw leadership, uh, mind and ego, and optimism. Mind, so ego, and optimism. I like that. That's a good yeah. combination. Go ahead. What's uh, what's your total for those? The total for that is uh, forty-five. Okay. <laughs> Roll your forty-five. Oh, so close to a miracle too. Uh. <laughs> All right, so that means I believe three, three successes on top of your original success condition. Um, so you do manage to find you start rooting around along the edges and stuff. Moss has started growing up onto the wall itself. Uh, apparently, it's you don't think it's been that long enough for moss to grow as high as it has, but you kind of chalk that up to it being a different environment. 
Um, apparently this moss is just very prolific. So you start kind of, you know, using a, a gloved finger to start poking in sections. And, and as you start tearing it down, you realize that there, it, it looks like there's a small crawl space, like one of the small hatches uh, inside one of the walls as an alternate means of entry. So you tear all of the moss down, uh, and it reveals the, uh, the crawl space. Uh, it is it is also latched, uh, but it's a, a simple pull, uh, like a turn. <sighs> I can't think of the word, like a turntable. I think that's it. Um, a wheel but, latch. A wheel latch, thank you. That's that's as simple as I can make it. Um, so you have three conditions. What would you like to do, Topher? Uh, <clears throat> First, I'd like to uh, open the door and smile at my face. Gentlemen, <laughs> uh, we just kind of—I'm looking at him, kind of glaring. Uh, realize that I have a uh, satchel of flares, along with a good, powerful flashlight. Okay, there's two of your conditions. I'm gonna actually gonna say you have one flare, not a satchel. One flare. Okay. One flare. I have a flare and a flashlight. Okay. So it's two conditions. What's um, your third? Third one. Hang on. And you can dictate something along the lines of the inner vent is clear of debris or moss, things like okay. that, to make it easier for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. Inner vent is clear of debris and moss, and smells of. Fresh linen. Fresh linen. Mm, okay, so apparently this has some connection, or somebody accidentally left a cap of uh, laundry detergent, and there is a you know that that old air freshening routine that some people tend to do, make it smell like home, you know. Um, and and you kind of motion both of the the gentlemen, gentlemen. I think we found our way in with that cheesy goddamn smile on your face. <laughs> And proceed to crawl in. Um, again, free of debris. There's nothing wrong. It all, it looks fairly polished for an air vent. Um, you guys managed. Are are you both following? Or you're going to wait for Topher to go through. I'm gonna. Pull I'm gonna wait for him to go off. first. <laughs> That's right. Leaders first. Yeah, I'm the smart ass. All right. So, are you both staying outside specifically, or are you waiting on Topher to go into the vent first and then following him? I'm following. I'm gonna. I'm gonna follow. Yeah, I'm heading into the bed. Okay. Because I don't want to itch anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's it's starting to get bad. Like if it's you basically got in just in time. Stop it. It's, so you go in. Uh, does anybody close the vent behind you? Uh, who's going last? I think you're last. Uh, I think you're okay, me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm closing the vent behind. Okay. So you turn around and lock it, and it is dark. Flashlight. Ding. So you take the flashlight up. You're kind of looking around and crawling at the same time. It's a very short vent. Uh, you manage to get to the other side, open it up, uh, and you go into the airlock itself. Uh, there is a large, the large metal door you just tried to go through, and what looks like another large metal door, but there is a control panel, an actual physical control panel next to oh, it. Oh, thank God. Um, you notice as soon as you get inside and you lock the door behind you, uh, there seems to be like that... Uh, the burning tends to go down just a little bit. So instead of the, oh, I want to peel my skin off type of itching, it's starting to reduce itself slowly, little by little, the more you're exposed to whatever's inside. So I want to avoid that for as long as possible. Um. All right. You have a gigantic airlock. You guys are stuck between two large metal doors. All right, so you guys like to try and open this door too? Or should I? I guess I'll do it. <laughs> I think the good command should <laughs> ring the doorbell first. All right, Topher, you want to walk up to the console? All right, welcome to the console. Oh, that's weird hearing and, noise. Uh, yeah, I start pushing buttons. Yeah, I start pushing buttons. Start pushing buttons. Okay, as you do so. Um, we are going to give me a quick sec. Oh, great. He's looking at stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at stuff. <laughs> stuff, not stuff. All oh, the stuff. So you see, let's see if I can get this. 
done up enough. Turning down volume now. Turn down for what? <laughs> I turn down. Uh, RPG ID is fantasy. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm uploading a, uh, a picture real quick. <laughs> Always a good sign. It's just one of those things I didn't think about to download before we started. Tony, you gotta do your dirt porn before the game. We don't talk about that. <laughs> Why isn't this working? Oh, well, whatever. Use your word. All right, so you think a um, so basically as you start pressing buttons, a um, a female head, a wireframe head. Uh, with one side kind of blending into the wire of the next, the rest of it is blue. So, like, one half of her face is constructed in blue, the other half of it is wire, and it kind of, there's no point at which there's a distinct transfer between the two. And she, she pops up and says, Hello, visitors. Well, hello, computer. <laughs> I am Monica. Can I assist you? You seem to be lost. <laughs> or at least don't Sorry. know what buttons to press. Are you visiting the station? Yes. Do you have a visitor's pass? Does it have the yes. brain cold? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you please insert pass into card slot? And you notice a small light light up on the console. It looks about the size of an ID card. Which you Do all we would have. have. ID okay. cards. Yes, yes, that is one thing that's been consistent through the years. <laughs> well, okay. I'm officer, I enter my. Uh, yeah. Okay. Medical. You enter your 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 ID <laughs> yeah, card. Okay, so you slot in your 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 uh, Marine Even Corps before. ID card, and it lights up and says, "Thank you, Captain uh, uh, Captain Saint. What Grieben. is it? Saint Greben? Greben." Greeman. Captain St. Greeman, thank you. Spits the card back out to you. It says, please, come on in. And you hear a silent wheeze and the large turning of mechanics as all of a sudden these large steel doors start parting. And it's dark at first. There is nothing visible besides maybe like a forklift. And they're very, very close to you but as the door opens there's gradually one fluorescent light flickers open and then another one flicks open and, and gradually there's a very long bay that is open oh, to like you that has each morning yeah so you have the stack of pallets um and it looks just like a general reception area as far as like goods and services so you have the forklift you have pallets upon pallets of materials gigantic crates with the uh, the logo of the empire on it which you know your marines of the empire um, and oh, it, it, it looks all very okay. official, except for the fact that there's nobody there, and it doesn't look like anybody's been there for a while. Mm, gentlemen? There has been an error in engineering. If you, could, if you are here for rescue, please follow the lights. And as, as Monica gives these instructions to you, all of a sudden you see these green arrows appear on, like, walls. And points you off to a corridor on the right hand side. Not Sandy. My lucky day. <laughs> nice. They tried shoulder. to kill him with, <laughs> with a forklift. Okay. Um, would you guys, uh, you guys start noticing that with you moving into the main area, um, the the rash has gone down a lot. Like yeah. you kind of reach back and feel it's not like you felt bumps starting to form, uh, but as you reach back there now, like it's almost like goosebumps, but they're gone. Um, they have seceded, and it doesn't like hurt anymore. It's just kind of a dull throb in that area. Uh, would any of you like to check the atmosphere? I would. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you know how to work it? Would you know how to work it? Huh. Uh, yes. Because sniffing for explosives. I could go with that. Expert. All right, go for it. <laughs> okay, cool. Ah, his former life and we all know who's going place. to be panting by the end of this scene. <laughs> no, 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 not physical sniffing. Oh, physical. Well, you still have your gas mask on. 
No, I, I, not physical. Just nothing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay. <laughs> I know how to work the machinery because I've been trained to sniff out explosives for chemicals. Explosives. Well, this is also an atmosphere detector. This isn't a chemical sniffer. Um, I might be more appropriate to do this as I'm sure I'd be able to check the atmosphere as part of like an airlock or something. Okay, can you make me a check? Yeah, I'll do essentially more or less the exact same test that I've already done. So this will hopefully be a bit better than last time. Okay. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, did you did you take like a bad luck attribute or something along those lines for uh, this one? <laughs> when I was GMing my last game, I kept on rolling like five sixes on like six dice. Oh, okay, yeah, this is probably them. Uh... <laughs> so this, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a, a tragedy, and tragedies <laughs> tragedies from a ninety-five to a one hundred is a tragedy and from a five to a zero i believe actually it's six to one because you can't so get a zero which parent is he going to marry uh, <laughs> so a, a tragic condition on a conflict set to cause injury the character causes injury to himself as though they'd scored a single condition against themselves. Uh, on a stabilization conflict the character's injury worsens critically the character's core injury increased by two degrees instead of one uh, the director can negate any one previously declared condition. And if the role involved a dramatic element, the director may choose to add or subtract 25% from any one role during the same scene. So basically, you done goofed in some way, shape, or form. So you pull out the atmosphere conditions. Um, and as, as you do so, you kind of like, you pull it out too quick and you end up throwing it. Oh. And as, it, as you throw it, it... Bounce, bounce, and it, 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 and you hear it break, but it keeps bouncing. So it ricochets off of one container, making a loud gong. Uh. It flies over to another one, hits another one, gong. And finally, it clatters to the ground with a huge cacophony of clattering and bounces off into a dark corner. Well, thanks, Pippin. <laughs> Damn bastards, greets <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you have. <laughs> um, would anybody like to? I assume that as Marines, you all would stop and listen yeah, yes. to make sure. Okay. Listening to her area. Ding, ding. You hear the uh, what sounded like a riffling noise, like something sc scuttling across the floor, followed by a long scratch. And something is now tapping on the container. Does anybody want to check to see where this tapping is coming from? Because this is a very large room, and you're not quite sure which container in particular is ringing. Um, can, we, can we judge by the, aud like the auditory? Uh, if you want to, Topher, you want to put some stats to that? Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, God. I'd offer a roll, but it wouldn't go well. <laughs> Let's do uh, interaction and knowledge with brilliant tactician. Okay. That's, yeah, that, that would be good. Jubilation to core. So <laughs> That's 50. 50 even. 44. Excellent. So you, you don't manage to get the extra condition, but you do manage to, to successfully dictate where the thing is. If you take a... Everybody else automatically pulls out the rifles. And you have your gigantic laser pistol out. And you're kind of listening. And you're trying to figure out exactly where it's coming from. And all of a sudden you point with the pistol and give the, the forward motion toward a set of crates, probably about two or three crates back. And as you focus in on it, dun, dun. Drums in the deep. And then it stops. What do you want to do? 
Just pee your pants off. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to try and approach it from tactically, like go around, because basically my guy... Stop smiling, me. Tony! I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm sorry. <laughs> let them go... Yeah. Flank, I'm going to go with middle flashlight pistol. Okay. Wait. Yeah, key, 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 okay. Okay. yeah I'm yeah. definitely following behind him. So. This I'm going to laser find cannon. Flank. Flank the other side, so Kim's right. Okay, so everybody's okay, kind of yeah. going around the crate. Okay. Um, as you you guys have uh, the... It's currently the only one with the flashlight. And as yeah. you approach the container, it starts getting just a little bit darker. Um, you notice that as you're walking toward it, this is the one container set, the one that does not have a light on above it. Oh, this one spontaneously failed. So as you walk around, it's getting... It's- it's getting too yeah it's starting to get real <laughs> dark and as you you file up against the the containers and you you wait and you breathe and you listen preparing for it and you hear uh dirty dan slide up against the other side quick and of course mental count one two three boom and you both flip around pointing at whatever the disturbance was but only to find it was nothing there's nothing on the other side of the containers I tap the container. Brave! <laughs> if it's not outside, it may be inside, so... Or let's just announce where whatever is in here, where we are, exactly where we are. Okay. <laughs> Ding. You're not hearing anything. Um, so I'm going to assume... So it's, it's Dirty Dan facing... And then you two facing that way, right? Yeah. Kind of like that? Okay. Um, Dirty Dan, you want to make yeah. me some sort of a spot check? Uh, body, mind, and in the core. Okay. So, you know, uh, that comes to 60. So hopefully this will do it. There you go. Excellent. All right, so 60 to 50 is 1, 50 not quite to 40. So not only are you successful in it, you get one condition after the fact. So as you're, as you're kind of pointing, you know, and, and you bring your gun down a little bit and relax just for a fraction of a second as you're trying to, like, peer around you and figure out where this guy went, and you see something come out of the shadows and is reaching toward the back of Pat's head. And you don't get a real good glimpse of what it is. It just looks like two human hands to an extent. Yeah. To an extent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I feel that my condition would be: Could I go? You no. Know, would a reasonable condition be? I tell them to duck, or something, before I start opening up. You can pull him out of the way if you really want to. Reach forward, grab him by the shirt, and just yank him. He's on the other side of the thing. Not that far. Definitely it's a condition, too. It's so. I mean, We're doing movie cinematics here. We're not doing... All right. So <laughs> pull him behind and start shooting. Okay, so you kind of just reach and, reach and pull. All right, so you don't manage to get the shots off, but you do manage to, to warn Pat in time to grab his shoulder and pull him out of the way and send him stumbling the other direction. Uh, you, Josh, you now owe Val one because he used, so as you pull him away and you start pulling the gun up to fire, Topher, you like, you notice how quickly, uh, Dirty Dan just moved to, and suddenly Pat goes flying. So you're starting to turn around, uh, Dirty Dan, what you see reaching out in front of him, you see, um, dirty bloodied hands. It looks like every fingernail on that hand has been ripped off and goes up to like the second knuckle, just in a bloody line. Um, and as they're reaching out, it's like the fingers themselves have almost been whittled down to the bone, and the bones themselves are pointed. So it's like he's got a little mini set of claws as he's reaching out toward him. And as you pull away and get closer and go around the slight edge of the container, it just screams. It looks like a man. But it looks like a man with a tattered 
marine uniform just hanging in rags blood everywhere dripping down a bare chest that has just all multitude of scratch marks no oh. discernible pattern but what really scares the shit out of you is the fact that when you look up at his face it looks like the man has taken rib bones and jutted them through his lips on either side making a withered maw that just as it opens and screams at you just fills you with fear Roll to not shit pants. Um. <laughs> what was that about so, missing pants? Yeah, so it's going to uh, try and attack you. <laughs> no, what's the feet you're right next to me? So that is, I believe. All right, so it's got a. Okay, so since it's trying to attack you, this can you can declare an opposed check. Would you like yeah. to do so? Basically, the way that works is the monster is going to get a roll kind of like you guys. Uh, it can either roll its base, what's called its threat level, uh, or it can push just like you guys do uh, for one of its values. Uh, it's a little more simplistic than you guys, but um, basically what you would do is in a post check is you would say, I'm going to spend this attribute and reduce its pool by that much. So in this particular case, he's going to be rolling 40. So, Val, you can say, okay, I'm going to spend an essence of, you know, an id, or I'm going to spend a piece of, you know, it, it, something that makes sense to try yep. and negate the fact that this thing is going to try and tear your face off. <laughs> All right. Um, I imagine that, you know, standard military combat, this would be a road action, you know, pulling the gun up, pushing it back or something. Okay. I'd so, so what's your road action? 25. 25. Yeah. All right. So it needs to make 15, I think. 30, 40. Yep. So it needs to make a 15 or lower in order to hit you. Oh. So you managed to just, like, out of pure instinct, just kind of rifle butt this thing right in the chest as the hand swooped right in front of your face. And you just get this rotten stench that fills your nostrils as the hand swipes by. It's just, it's so fetid and terrible. Um, it's like if you left meat in the fridge for too long and it's just, everything has gone wrong with it. You slam him in the chest, he stumbles back a couple inches and he just kind of bends back down and he's ready to go. And just, Captain again, lets out this piercing wail and just starts screaming. He's, uh right next to me then basically right he just went past me to get to him that's correct mm -hmm. okay so if he's right in front of me can i like, shoot him in the head yeah roll it okay uh he's going to use his um his psyche to negate that uh so okay. you're going to take a minus 10 to whatever you do okay he's basically this scream and this wail is trying to terrify you to the point of you missing okay I'm doing uh, id, rope skill, and marksman. Okay. So what's the next, what's the id for? Uh, animal, just the reflex. Okay. Yep. Uh, so my id is ten, so that kind of negates that. Yep, that negates so marksman that. and rope skill is twenty-five. Together. Yeah. You better hope you make it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, nope unfortunately not so you you pull up and it manages to kind of like pop your pop your um your pistol up and you fire wildly into the ceiling as the 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 bright red crimson beam shoots into the ceiling uh and it just lunges at you am i able to start shooting at this point uh yeah at this point it would be your turn so what would you like to do to this you're kind of stumbling forward and all of this just happened behind you and all you hear is this piercing wail and Suddenly realize that Dirty Dan has probably just saved your life. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, then. Okay, so I'm going to use body. Id. Can I can I roll to recover and start shooting? Yeah. No. This this would be what what basically you're trying to do. Okay. So yeah, body, id, and. Watch their backs. Okay. Sounds like a plan. What's the total? 
Okay, so that is 25, 10, 35, 15, 35 plus 15, 50. 50, all right, roll it. As I look down and see in <laughs> anticipation what it's going to be. So oh my God, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you turn around. You manage to drop into the classic firing pose, and you just let off this burst where you think it's going to be, not where you knew it was going to be. Uh, you manage to, to fire in between everybody, and it ricochets off the concrete walls. No. All right, so this would be, I believe, Dirty Dan's turn since... Actually, oh, no. Yeah, Dirty Dan, you, yeah, you, pulled it, you pulled Pat out of the way, and it, it attacked you, yeah. so it would be your turn. All right, so I'm going to use body, rope, and dirty my, you know, foul mouth. I'll show you bastards how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I like that. It pushes my rope into the fourth and into the minus five. Okay. So does that work after this? Or... No, it works on this. You are currently on... pushing, like you're pushing your rope skill to its limits. So this, would, this roll would take a negative five. All right, so I'm currently working on 65. It's found out that it's 25. Road is now 20, and my body is 20. Okay. All right. Let's not screw up. Nice. All right, so you were rolling, you said a 65 on this one? Yep. So 65, 55, 45, 35. So you get, not only do you successfully uh, shoot this thing, um, you get three conditions as well. So the assault rifle would do up to, I believe, core. Yeah, we'll do, since that's the first core. All right. Blah, 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 blah. As, as you kind of spin around and almost one-handed assault rifle this thing right in the chest, it lets out another whale and starts trying to charge you. There's just blood spilling everywhere. Um, looks Wait, like man. you hit it pretty hard. Wouldn't it have a chance to do an opposed thing? To... It did. It just didn't, it didn't try at that point. Yeah. Um, cause the way that the, the enemies work in the rules is that they have a certain amount of pushes that they can oppose things with. So you kind of got to pick and choose what you want to do. So unlike you guys who have an, basically a shit ton of pushes per all of your attributes, it only has like a handful. All right. So it's going to try to charge you and it's going to push and it's going, um, a physical and you realize this thing is moving a lot faster than a person should be. Um, and it's charging directly at the person that fired at it. Dirty Dan, you are the, apparently the subject of its ire today, uh, and you are going to be rolling against 50. So would you so like what to... conditions do I get to pick? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Your, your three conditions, what would you like to say? Can I up on the damage and make sure that I don't hit any of the electronics or gas lines or that kind of thing? Okay, so you're, you're, how many conditions are you going to push toward extra damage? Because basically with the assault rifle, it's going to be about an extra 5% past what you've done for each condition. Uh, just one and the other one to not use up that much ammunition to be trying precise with my shots. Okay. And you got one more. You have three total. Yeah, yeah not, don't hit any gas lines or... Anything that could... <laughs> Anything catastrophic. Okay. All right, so you're not... Okay, so both of those conditions go through okay. You actually end up doing more damage. Um, you you manage to concentrate most of your fire around what you assume is its heart. Um, as, again, as far as you can tell, it looks like a human. It should a still act like a human as far as you're concerned. So you just blast all up in this upper left-hand chest area and just tear it apart to the point where there's like a nice almost fist-sized hole just kind of gaping off. You actually see the heart start to kind of fall out of the chest. You've blasted so much ammo into it. Um, precisely, though, like you used a couple of nice shots, but it's just like the rounds that you're using just caved it in. Um, and you can kind of see the half-beaten heart just kind of pulsing blood out. And it turns to you, pulls the heart out of its own chest, and throws it on the ground and screams at you again. All right. 
This is going well. <laughs> <laughs> so would you like to uh, would you like to oppose his check? Yeah. Put his heart back in. <laughs> Can I put his heart back in for healing damage? <laughs> All right. I mean, so, really I... any yeah. attribute, not your, uh, not your descriptors. Feel that this is as good as any other time to do a body test to try and make the most of it. Rushing at me. Okay. Good so, what's your body? Twenty. All right. So it's dropping that. Oh man. So not only does it uh, it it runs towards you, but you manage to sidestep it and kind of shoulder it in the chest before anything can touch you, and it ricochets off and starts spinning off like a, a proper linebacker just blocked him. So that would be Topher. You, you want to try and reconcile your <laughs> your shot yeah, there? I do. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and seeing what he did with his own heart. I am whipping the flare out of my bag, striking it. And gonna go try and stab it with the flare. Gonna try and stab it with the flare. Okay. <laughs> All right, roll it. What are you gonna do for it? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, not shoot for the head. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? With the gigantic <laughs> laser pistol you have, I know. I'm gonna <laughs> shove a flare in his stab heart. With the flare. <laughs> uh, this, this can only go better. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just look at my options here real quick? Oh, we're gonna uh, die. <laughs> Request permission okay. to fall on my yeah, salt. Yeah, we're gonna go so. with uh, <laughs> body and mind. Sorry, I'm looking up Bilbo's birthday photos with, and uh, Pickle and has a special section for when his birthday is. Okay. September twenty second. <laughs> 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 with Optimist again. <laughs> I am gonna kill him with a spare. <laughs> this will most certainly work with no this ill side effects. It. This should do it. <laughs> I see no downside whatsoever. So, I mean, what could go wrong? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. What could go wrong? Words we're um, living by right now. <laughs> you know what? Actually, can I throw another? It's not get any uh, worse. Like a descriptor in? No, it's only one There's descriptor. One descriptor. Okay, I'm actually going to get rid of the Optimus then and go with Brilliant Tactician. Brilliant! <laughs> I don't feel that would be applicable in this case. <laughs> Patton did it. Have you guys seen this work? <laughs> don't work remember when Patton I saw, I saw this work Marvel. in a movie once, guys. Hold on. <laughs> he just took those flares. All right. So um, yeah, no, I'm going to say that Brilliant Tactician is not going to apply in this work? case. Okay, we'll go with Optimus then. Optimus, okay. That's much better. <laughs> I think this is going to work. <laughs> All right. Roll it. 45. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Um, you don't. You do succeed, but you don't get any conditions on it. Um, as you stab, you you strike the flare as it's spinning past you. You rush up, grab it by the neck, and stab the flare into the space that was its heart. And you just hear it wail and start to gurgle and scream like some sort of a drowned cat. And its scream only rises in pitch. Um, everybody take, um, we're going to say 5% conditional damage because this piercing is e echo and, echoing and shaking everything around you. And finally it just wheezes and collapses on the floor as the, uh, the material starts to burn from the flare. Brilliant tactician. No, <laughs> this goes just like 5% goes into the, <laughs> the conditional the, box, the conditional right? part. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be a dick and make you guys take core <laughs> damage from that. But it was loud as shit, and you guys are kind of like stumbling around a little bit, like holding your ears, like something loud, just like a loud explosion just happened close to your ears. It was just the concussive force. Yeah. Um, so you kind of like you take a moment, and you're like, all right, and the thought enters your head. Hopefully, that's the only one. That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> What would you guys like to do? Um, can I ask the computer if there's a terminal somewhere around how many columns there were? I'm sorry, say that one more time. Can I ask the computer how many columnists are meant to be on the station? Okay. 
Um, colonists and Marines. Colonists. Okay, so colonists, Monica pops up and goes, colonists, population of 150 people. Ding, correction, 149 people. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> One down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do we really have Optimist. to find out what happened? <laughs> do we really? Do we really need really? to? Like, uh, okay. Can't we just, I don't know, plant C4 somewhere? Gas and lines? pretend it exploded and you don't have to worry about it anymore? Exactly. We could say, <laughs> just drop it just blew up when we got there. Okay, so, um, you guys have the. Would anybody like to actually analyze the atmosphere now? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You notice that the burn the and the ache is entirely gone. Okay. Yeah. Well, so it looks like he was scratching himself. From what we can see, it looked like he was scratching himself. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's all you know is that there were on the rapidly burning chest of the man. Uh, as the stench of the air fills with cooked pork and burning hair, um, the uh, you guys notice as it rapidly starts boiling and almost melting off of the the chest area, it looks like it just cuts. You don't know if they were his. You don't know what caused them. It just looks like they were ser- like serrated. And of course, the I fact that the man just pulled out his own heart. So uh, I don't know. I kind of don't want to take off my suit now. It was itching, and then more itching. Um, are there any, like, heavy-duty environmental suits? Could I ask that of the computer or use some sort of knowledge mine test or something? Yes. If you would like to use a knowledge mine, you certainly can. Yep, I might use knowledge mind and debris. Uh, wait a minute. I, yeah, it, I had pilot and in the core. So maybe pilot. I'm gonna assume that if they've got any shuttles or something, that there would be emergency supplies. Yeah. Type stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna ask around ships and you know where the supplies linked to those are. All you right. Know, mind make, and knowledge. make the roll. All right. So that brings me to sixty. Very nice. Okay. Um, so you have two conditions. 60, 50, 40. Yeah, two conditions. Um, the successful condition is that uh, you asked Monica are there any, if there are any environmental type suits. And she goes, yes, located in the emergency uh, escape chambers. Okay. All right. They are in case of atmospheric decompression in this lifestyle. I'm sorry, in this planet we are able to support for two hours outside of atmospheric conditions right. so what would you um, like to do with those two conditions I want there to be one of these pods unopened relatively close by I want <laughs> there to be enough suits to go around Okay, both of those conditions can be met, but they are not going to be in here. Um, you do remember, you, you believe what she's talking about are the two outer, like if there's a large circle uh, representing the outer ring of the base with the biodome in the center with uh, five or six modules as they go around, the two escape areas are on either side. You came in down at the bottom, and the, uh, the place where the glass was blown out was at the top. So Almost we're like sp- halfway either way. Yep. Okay. All right. So we just have to get there really quick, get the suits, cry. <laughs> Do you say pray or cry? Because either is extremely oh. applicable right now. Uh, I can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> There's an app for is, that. Is pants shitting available? Because uh. of- you can, but you'd have to roll to find an extra set. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> what would you guys like pants. to do? I'm not sure how. <laughs> None. Okay. Um. Well then. So we're being. Are we able to figure out if the lights are leading us to the the area with the blown out windows? Uh, or... you, you don't know that. Uh, you Actually, you do know. You know that Monica said that the arrows are leading to the uh, engineering room, which she said was currently not functioning. Okay. Is that for us to rescue or to be rescued? Both. <laughs> <laughs> We're works. our own cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody save me. I'm doing a bad job at it. <laughs> I... Can I look for some vent system or something that runs perpendicular to the main rooms and try and... Because I don't feel us being in the corridors is the best idea. Is you, that more from your, operational? From your flyby, uh, you pretty much realize that the only things that are going around in that circle, it is basically compartment, corridor, compartment, corridor. Uh, set up in a modular fashion. So pretty much all of the like the big cables, ventilation, all that would run basically on top of those corridors going between so, it. What I'm more asking, I suppose, is is there an obvious easy access vent system that I can find? No. No. Uh, could I ask the computer if it knows where the colonists are? Yes, you can. Um, wh how would you like to phrase the question? Okay. Um, where... Uh, where are the heaviest percentages of colonists located? Currently, 80, 80, 80 percent of the colonists are located in the bu bu biodome, located in the center of the colony. Hmm. Uh, let's not go to the biodome. <laughs> uh, can we ask the computer, uh, what's the status on the health of the colonists? Unknown. All right. Is there a god computer? <laughs> Unknown. Yeah. What's the meaning of life? Forty-two. Reference: Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Gut 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 G. Oh no! Did we kill it? Oh, way to go! <laughs> I just Can wanted we... to know if there was a god. <laughs> uh. Well. What was up, pal? I was gonna basically try and get my character to get us moving because, you know, if the computer's having glitches talking, I don't want to be here when it breaks. Mm. <coughs> Which, yeah. considering, you know, the state of things, wouldn't be great. Right. Okay, yeah, let's go follow the lights. Okay. Following the lights. Do, 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 do. So as you guys, <laughs> so you guys move tactically toward the uh, toward the corridor, um, and as you're moving, you notice that there is a, a whoosh of another door, and the lights in the hall. I'm sorry, the lights in the um, the area you just left, the receiving area, start gradually shutting off one by one as they detect you leaving. Eventually. You walk 10 feet into the hallway and all of the lights are off behind you. The only thing that is basically following you is a track lighting system that's installed in there. And as you walk through the door, you it silently closes. And we're going to call that first scene. What do you guys think? Sounds good. Interesting. Okay. Um, so oh. who has who dropped into a negative, um, a negative quality? I a did. negative attribute. Val, you're the only one. All right, let's see. Let's see what his prize is, ladies and gentlemen. Regret. You get two points back. <laughs> any place that you want to put them. So you basically get to erase check marks in any of your statistics. Um, 
pushing back that road to a two might be good. Okay. Okay. So you guys do manage to rest a little bit um, as you as you're you're walking. Uh, Do you want to take a five ten minute break? If you guys needed to use the bathroom or anything like that. Uh, Sure. Okay. Works for me. So we'll call this break and we will continue with scene two of the Exodus, as I will call it. I just came up with that shit. Pretty that fucking fancy. <laughs> it's certainly now. Oh, man. This is a so, bug hunt, man. A bug hunt. Tell me honest opinions. What do you guys think so far? I like it. I think you're a beautiful man. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I feel I like we're going to need to come up with smarter ways to deal with bigger enemies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that yeah. is the last player, actually. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, we just used up our one player. Flashlight. Maybe using our explosives in a. Yeah, I'm fine with using. <laughs> Please. I, I just want to use them in a Please space. use the explosives. Give me an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> DM is smiling one way. Okay. Well, when the DM smiles, way. especially in a game like this, it is always a dangerous thing. <laughs> oh man, do we have anybody listening? Uh, yeah, Ray's listening. Hi, Rachel. Hello. How are you? Good. I unfortunately only get to listen to the last few minutes. Yeah, that's okay. So we you didn't entertained? Think about sharing headphones until much later <laughs> well i'm probably gonna play one or two more of these before we decide to start getting into anything big with this group so awesome. i feel like uh unless topher wants to take one from here no no, no. i'm good for now I've <laughs> i'm looking for something other than verizon right now so Just makes see. sense Val, you're always welcome to do it, too. <laughs> We're um, basically Joshua and Topher are my friends that live in Virginia. I live in PA. And uh, they were always, they every time I saw them, they were complaining how our the campaigns always used to die over, like, but two or three <laughs> sessions. Yeah, I don't come across that issue. But, like, I feel that sometimes with my regular... <laughs> They're Three-fourths of the butts in this chat right now. Three-fourths of the butts in this chat? Yeah. Yours, Topher's, my own. Yeah, what? Travel to get the achievement. What? I've touched your you butt before. Oh, yeah, okay. I thought you were talking to Ray. I'm like, Ray's never touched my butt. <laughs> I've barely seen her. Like, what is going on over in that place? Yeah, I've met, I've met you once. I'm pretty sure you didn't touch my butt at any point in that encounter. It's not something I practice doing on people I meet yeah. for the first time. Yeah, no, I, and, that is, and that is thankful. I am appreciative of that fact. I would have been very concerned had a random person I just met walks up and grabs my butt. 
Well, that's how we met. I found it. No, we met about talking about pyro mechanic or pyro mania. Uh, Pyro mechanics. Technically, pyro, yeah, we were we were mania. talking about how to set off fire legally. So technically, it was pyro mechanics. Many things, many things on fire, and thus the friendship was born.